This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. I had been planning to talk NFL divisional futures for today, but then last night we got a Woj bomb with Mikel Bridges going out to the New York Knicks and a massive trade in the NBA. The NBA draft is tonight too. So we're going to talk some basketball for today. Bringing on Tom Vecchio to break down his thoughts on the Bridges trade, what it means for the Knicks ceiling, whether their futures he wants to grab, and then I'll talk some Formula One in Austria for this weekend. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research, joined here as mentioned by Tom Vecchio. Check him out on X at Tom underscore Vecchio one. Find his work over at FanDuel Research and on the FanDuel Research podcast feed. Tom, big trade in the NBA. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, my Nets made a move to uh, ship bridges across the bridge to the, the Knicks. Uh, it was probably a necessary move, uh, all things considered. They got a big package back. Obviously, what that ends up being in terms of not just the picks, but the actual players way too far down the line. But ultimately it's probably the right move for the franchise, but you know, I'm ready to go talk about the Knicks uh, moving forward. Yeah, we're not going to talk the net side of this thing because we're looking at uh, conference outrights, NBA finals outrights, probably not a factor in that discussion for next year. So sorry, Tom, uh, but we'll talk about them. I'm sure down the line, we'll talk about the Knicks side of things. And again, talk their ceiling. Uh, any NBA draft takes from you, Tom, before we uh, dive in for today? No, I the whole Bronny James thing is is going to be the main storyline when he gets drafted, who he goes to. It's probably far overhyped than it needs to be because he realistically, he, he probably should have stayed another year in college, but you know, you gotta, you gotta get out while, while you can. And because if he stayed another year, there's a chance he would absolutely go in the second round. There's a chance he goes in the first round tonight. You know, I, I don't have a whole lot of interest until free agency is set because even if high end players are drafted top uh, you know, rookies, their playing time is only what matters to me when I talk about it from a DFS perspective. So it's like, it's really just a wait and see until training camp rolls around. Okay. Well, I need this uh, castle ticket to go first overall. It's not looking good for me. So <laughs> clearly I know exactly what I'm talking about and was very informed in placing that bet. Uh, 80 to one. He's, he's not going to make it happen, but Hey, you know, we gave it a shot regardless. We'll talk the bridges trade with Tom here and we'll talk formula one in Austria in just one second. But first a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcast tomorrow. We're going to talk Euro 2024 round of 16 betting with Austin Cass, getting his thoughts on the field there as we get the actual bracket in the Euro 2024 tournament. Then on Friday, UFC pay-per-view. We'll get that discussion going with Austin Swain. So make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating and review wherever you get your podcasts. The dog days are here, and the coolest place to get in on the MLB action is FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or bonus daily. That's right. There is something to for everyone every day all summer long. You can score bigger winnings in any inning with profit boosts, snag bonus bets for home runs every Tuesday, and even beat the heat with no sweat bets. So head over to FanDuel and make betting or and start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball, must be 18 plus in DC and 21 plus in present and select states. Opt in required, wager requirements apply, bonuses awarded as non trouble bonus bets or profit boost tokens, restrictions apply, including bonus expiration. See terms and conditions at fanduel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, DC, Iowa, Kentucky. Michigan, New Jersey, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, Vermont, Virginia, and Wyoming. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700 visit chaosgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghelp.org in Maryland. 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. 
Let's take a look now at this trade, Tom, uh, with Mikel, Mikel Bridges going out to the New York Knicks. And I think the most important question here is about the Knicks ceiling. We can talk win totals. We can talk divisional odds once those are up. Uh, but I think the bigger thing right now is what does this do for them in a very tough East? From a team perspective, how does Bridges alter the Knicks ceiling right now? So ultimately, it comes down to you know, two things. And it, it's not just bridges because it's, it's like, how does this domino affect the rest of the Knicks? Because the, the two main questions that they're now facing, uh, you know, will they, do they have the ability to re-sign OG and Anobi, who we know is electing free agency? And then are they going to be able to re-sign Isaiah Hartenstein? And there are some reports out there, at least as of now, you know, the 26th in the morning that he has a lot of interest in free agency. They may not be able to re-sign him. So simply getting bridges, you know, by itself is good, but how does that impact the rest of their offseason plans before the draft, before free agency, when we're recording this? So if they were to be able to re-sign OG Ananobi and someone along the role of Hartenstein or him exactly, I think this pushes them to be a clear contender for the Eastern Conference Finals. And, you know, the joke people made in the playoffs when the Knicks were playing the Pacers is that, oh, this was just a – a series to determine who has the right to lose to the Celtics in the next round. But we have to remember that the Knicks went to seven games against the Pacers where Brunson was hurt at the very end and they didn't have Julius Randle. So if we look, say, what's the ceiling for the Knicks? Well, uh, when we have this conversation about any team in any sport, like the ceiling would be what if they play their best and assuming that everyone's healthy because if they, and they also didn't have OG at the end of that series versus the Pacers. So if they can re-sign him, and they have Bridges into the mix, and Julius Randle is healthy, you know, for, and everyone's healthy for the entire postseason. Like that is a team starting five that I think can compete with the Celtics. And right now at FanDuel Sportsbook, the Knicks to win the East is five to one. Obviously, winning it and getting there are two very different things, but they're five to one, tied with the Bucks for number two in the East, followed by the Sixers at seven to one, then a drop off down to the Heat at 15 to one. So is it realistic to expect them to be able to beat the Celtics? You should compete with and compete with and beat are two separate things. So we're looking at Knicks futures, five to one to win the East, 10 to one to win the NBA finals. Any interest there? Or is that too big of a step for you, given the obstacles they'll have to go through to get there? Right. I think it is. It is too big of a step. I will say there's one future that I have interest in, which may be a bit of a stretch for some people. And that's the Knicks to win the Atlantic division which I've seen around the industry at plus 370. Celtics are obviously the favorite at minus 250, Knicks plus 370, 76ers at plus 475. Now, again, this is before free agency. This is before the draft, before all these things happen. Here's the approach that, uh, you know, I started thinking about this last night when the, the trade went down. Over the past few years, given what the Celtics went through, losing to the Warriors, losing to the Heat, and then finally coming through with this win, you know, last year when I was looking at the Celtics, it almost seems like it almost seemed to me at least that they were in a sprint with themselves. They were racing themselves to prove to everyone that they were the best team. We talked about it before. They're blowing teams out by 20, 30 points. You know, and they, they you know, winning the, the East by 10 games, they had this fully comfortable lead. But what we know is that they weren't healthy in the playoffs without Porzingis, and he's going to have surgery. So I'm thinking to myself, what if the Celtics, and I don't want to say a championship hangover, what if they have like a – a mentality of like, we can lose a battle, but still win the war Yeah, where Al Horford's not getting any younger. Drew Holiday's not getting any younger. So it, instead of like this sprint, they have like a gradual ramp up. And now the Knicks are a team that need to prove themselves. So the Knicks to win the division, I think is a spot to take knowing that you can hedge out and you can cash out. And then if the Celtics at some point drop to minus one fifty. You know, maybe they get off to a little bit of a slow start again. The championship coming off that, the Knicks come out with all this fire. If you can then buy into the Celtics at minus 150 after their odds change, you're left with a little bit of flexibility. Okay. And she said plus 370 is what you've seen that at so far? I, yeah, I can see it at plus 370 right now. If it was at plus 300, it, I probably wouldn't touch it at all. Okay. But plus 370, maybe plus 350 or better is where I would take it. I do think that the thought process there does make a lot of sense. Cause like you said, they have nothing to prove now during the regular season. It is full that they got the ring. They can be full championship or bust, which does not require you to push all out right. during the regular season. And like Tom Thibodeau is not going to pull back on the reins. Like that's right. not how he's going to operate. So like there's no concern for that with the Knicks, which means 
looking at the regular season markets may be the best way to buy into this team if you think that them with Bridges is going to be as good as what the futures market indicates they could be. Right. And then the next spot that I would look at, and again, this is highly speculative as of now because the, A, the markets aren't posted and we don't know what the re- they're going to do because if they re-sign OG and Anobi, it could be Brunson, Ananobi, Hart, Bridges, Randall as a starting lineup. I think there could be some value for Dante DiVincenzo to win sixth man of the year. But again, he could be in the starting lineup if they don't re-sign OG and Anobi. Right. So this is like, again, it's before free agency, before the draft. There's a thousand moving parts. And like what I said with Bridges is like, that's the first domino to fall. But where does this lead them now? Because DiVincenzo is a big time scorer, which we saw once he stepped into the starting lineup when you know everyone was hurt at the end of last year. He could be that prominent scorer off the bench if that's his role. But we just don't know if that's his role as of now. Right. So DiVincenzo... DiVincenzo potentially down the line could be a guy to target for six man of the year, but that does depend on what they do with Ananobi and some free agent stuff for the Knicks. But the Knicks definitely are going to be a fun team to watch in 2024 and 2025. Now we had this big one, Tom, but obviously we saw some talk about, you know, the, some movement with the Rockets and the Nets last night as well. So other moves could be coming down the line. Are there any other futures you want to buy into Tom to get ahead of any potential moves we could see over the next week or so? So I was perusing the MVP awards Uh huh. and, you know, there's speculation, as you said about, you know, maybe will Durant be traded? You know, they have cap space. They have all these things. Devin Booker to win MVP Assuming he would be the guy in Phoenix, right? If there's no more Durant, we're seeing, we saw a very mediocre season from Bradley Beal. He was injured half the time. But if Booker is now given the reins to the team, this is a player that we have seen go through these scoring stretches where he routinely scores 40 points a night. So simply based on usage, a new opportunity, those types of storylines, which again, Durant is still on the team as of now could push him into an MVP conversation because if a player averages 35 plus points a night, he's going to be in the MVP conversation regardless of what team he's on. So highly speculative as of now on June 26th, but if Durant has moved, it's, it's Booker's team and that's 25 shots a night. Interesting. So Devin Booker, a hundred to one twin MVP right now, FanDuel Sportsbook. I think the downside here would be like, okay, sounds like they want to keep Durant for the start of the season. In the event they trade him, it probably implies the team has been not performing up to snuff, yes. and that means that Booker's probably not going to win MVP. So that's the downside case there. But again, it's it's 1% implied odds. Right. So can you justify that? Probably. I think that makes a lot of sense. So uh, And like, it's not as if Booker's odds would be zero if we assume Durant stays in the team. Like They would not be zero. They would take a hit, obviously. Um, but there's still a scenario in which he just plays out of his mind because we've seen Devin Booker do that plenty of times. So right. uh, Devin Booker, 100 to 1 for MVP, potential consideration there. But then also check it out the Knicks uh, divisional odds once as are posted over at FanDuel Sportsbook. That is Tom Vecchio. Make sure you check him out on X at Tom underscore Vecchio 1. Tom, you're on vacation the next couple of days, so enjoy that. Have a fantastic weekend. We'll talk to you once again next week to break down some free agency talk in the NBA. All right. Thanks for having me. All righty. Again, you can find Tom on X at Tom underscore Vecchio one. And again, we'll talk to him about some more NBA free agency stuff next week. Before we finish up for today, though, do you want to go through some Formula One uh, for this weekend? They are out in Austria and a really fun track. I think this whole stretch here is a very, is a stretch of fun track. So they got, um, they're heading out to Silverstone here pretty soon. So this stretch of Formula One is going to be a lot of fun. It's become pretty clear that the top two guys in Formula One are Max Verstappen and Lando Norris. And it is top two guys, not the top one guy anymore, given how competitive Lando has been over the past five races now, ever since he won in Miami. That's reflected in the odds market, though. Verstappen minus 175 to win. Lando plus 240. Uh, the implied odds for Lando, 29.4%. Verstappen, 63.6% implied. I've got Lando below 20% and Verstappen at 59%. So still very clearly the top two guys, but not showing value on either. And part of the reason I don't show value on either is because there are a lot of guys with a lot of speed in the field right now. And I think that some of them could contend for a win. The problem is if you're betting against Verstappen and Norris or betting it outright on someone else, you're betting against those guys. and You not only need to be right that one of those two does not win, but you also have to pick the right driver. And that can be kind of tough. 
But at FanDuel, you can actually bundle two guys together via the Motorsports Specials. And that's what I want to do for today. So go to FanDuel Sportsbook, click on the Motorsports Specials, uh, plus 1,100 to plus 3,200. In that tab, you're going to find either Charles Leclerc or Oscar Piastri to win the race in Austria. Those That number is 13 to 1 for those two paired together. The implied odds there are 7.1%. I have Leclerc by himself at 7.2%, which might be too high. But then I also have Piastri at 4.4%. Piastri is 30 to 1 to win at FanDuel. I've seen 40 out there in some spots. Uh, but the implied odds at 30 to 1 at 3.2%. So when you put them together, I have either Leclerc or Norris or Leclerc or Piastri winning 11.7% of the time. And it could be the coward way out to play things by bundling the, them together. I could just pick one instead, but their combined implied odds uh, for Leclerc and Piastri are 7.7% and it's 7.1% here to bundle them together. So I actually do think this is a better market than betting either both or picking one of the two. Talking about these two guys and why I want them specifically for Leclerc, he actually had a really good race pace in Spain. If you look at like his median lap times and stuff, he was really impressive. He just started a bit further back and had to work around his teammate, Carlos Sainz. Sainz passed him pretty early. Leclerc to get back, back past Sainz later on. That might have slowed him down a bit. Obviously, the qualifying pace has been off the past two weeks, but it did seem like Leclerc got better as the weekend went along in Barcelona last week. So he got that as weekend went along, had really good race pace. And I think had he started towards the front, could have been in contention for getting that podium instead of Lewis Hamilton. As for Piastri, he started 10th last week due to an issue he had in Q3. He didn't actually get an official lap down. But again, really good race pace. I think that Piastri could have been on the podium had he started better for that race. The speed was really good for Piastri at other tracks too. In Miami, he... Had an issue, but was running really well before that. Obviously, was very fast in Monaco. Nearly won the pole in Imola. I think the Q3 issues last week for Piastri are allowing him to go a bit undervalued right now. And he's definitely shown upside. The one downside is he does struggle with tire degradation, which is why Norris is much better than him in a lot of these tracks. And that could be an issue for this week. But um, I do think that the speed is better than what the numbers are hinting at for Piastri right now. I also do show value on Piastri to finish top six. I have him at 78%. His implied odds at minus 230 are 69%. So you could take him top six. Again, I show value on him to win at uh, at 30 to one. But I think the best market for me across this entire field is on either Leclerc or Piastri to win 13 to one at FanDuel Sportsbook. Don't mind Leclerc 21 to one. That's a pretty good number relative to market. And then I don't mind Piastri at 30 to one. But I think that the better way is to combine these two if we're given the option to do so, which FanDuel does give to us. So Leclerc or Piastri to win 13 to 1. That again, that's in the Motorsports Specials tab under the Formula One tab at FanDuel Sportsbook, 11 to 1 to 32 to 1 uh, for either Leclerc or Piastri to win. That's all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. Big thank you once again to Tom Vecchio for joining us to break down his thoughts on the Mikel Bridges trade. Find Tom on X at Tom underscore Vecchio one. I am on X at Jim Sonis. You can also find FanDuel Research on X at FanDuel Research. Tomorrow we're talking Euro 2024 round of 16 betting with Austin, with Austin Cass. I'll tell us also talk some NASCAR in Nashville on that show. To get that as it is posted, make sure you're subscribed to the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcast want to thank you all for tuning in for today good luck to you with your bets across wednesday enjoy the nba draft tonight and some major league baseball action we'll talk to you once again tomorrow this has been covering the spread right here on the fan duel podcast network